Hello and welcome to another video. Let's talk about how I've been growing my back without directly training it, just executing a overhead triceps extension. How the hell is this possible? Over the past three to four years, all I've done is these dumbbell or cable triceps extensions overhead and my back has significantly grown. What? If you're new here, first off, I have limitations. You're probably going, why don't you just train your back directly? I can't, okay, I can't train my back, my chest, my shoulders directly. Okay, I can't push them with high intensity. I run into problems, I get nerve issues. Whole left side of my face starts going numb. I don't wanna go into all the details, explain my injury again, oh no. Boy, me, I'm all crooked and snapped up. If you wanna understand in more detail the imbalances and the problems that I've had that have led to me not being able to train chest, back, and shoulders directly, I'm gonna link a couple videos in the description that outline in detail exactly what has happened there. For the sake of this video though, I wanna talk about what I think has led to this growth and how you can apply this to your training to see more muscle growth. Whether you also have some kind of limitations or you're a little bit injured or you're perfectly fine and you can train your back and every other muscle directly. Regardless, I think there's some key insights here that are gonna help you to be able to make more gains from this kind of accidental experiment I've been doing over the past three and a half, four years, all right? So first off though, set the foundation. Let's talk about it from a anatomical and anatomy based perspective. So how the hell can the back of the lats grow at all from a triceps exercise? This overhead triceps movement is the only triceps movement I've been able to do for the past freaking three and a half, four years. Kind of mimics a pullover. A dumbbell pullover, a cable pullover, and we all know that that hits your lats, all right? And normally you'd be doing a dumbbell pullover laying flat on a bench, so it's not exactly the same, but it's not that hard to see how it's gonna stimulate your lats a little bit. If you're still a little bit unclear, I'm gonna make it more clear by explaining the cues that I use. So when I'm doing this movement, I'm thinking about four things. Number one is I'm dropping my shoulders down. I don't want my shoulders elevating up towards my ears, okay? Number two, I'm scooping my elbows in. I'm trying to point them into the mirror in front of me. Towards the end of the set, when things start to fatigue, they flare a little, but I'm cueing myself to try to point them forward, all right? Number three, I'm letting my elbows drift back as far as I can, and I'm kind of leaning back some over the bench, so I'm getting more of a stretch through my chest and my lats. And then number four, I'm focusing on pushing the weight up and back. Rather than kind of bringing it forward over the top of my head, I'm pushing up and back. And I've found, over many friggin' years of only doing this god dang one exercise, that when I use those cues, I get a pretty significant stimulation in the lats, as well as some in the chest and the delts, but that's for another video. We're gonna focus on the back here. So we're getting some indirect stimulus. The lats are kind of working in as an accessory muscle to the primary moving muscle, in this case, obviously the triceps, right? Okay, and the second ingredient to this is that I'm also sprinkling in really high intensity training and intensity techniques, which I think stimulate the stabilizing muscle, lats, more. So as you can see in this footage here, I'm pushing to failure and I'm pushing beyond by using drop sets where you take a set to failure and then you drop the weight a little bit and you do another set, you drop the weight a little bit more, you do another set, however many drop sets you're gonna do. And I'm also using partials. So once I hit full range of motion failure where I can't complete my normal range of motion, so that's where probably normal muscle failure or failure is, according to most people's definition of it when it comes to training in the gym. Uh, and then you continue to execute reps that get subsequently smaller and smaller as the fatigue compounds. You get more and more tired until you can you know, barely move the weight at all. That would be doing a whole bunch of partials at the end, an intensity technique that pushes the muscle beyond failure. And the reason I think this is important is without this extreme intensity approach, I don't think you're gonna get a lot I don't think I would have gotten a lot of stimulus and growth in the lats um, just because of the anatomical things I explained in the beginning where yes, it is getting kind of put in the line of fire and there's a pretty good stretch tension on the lats in that position. As a stabilizer, they're gonna have to work some, but I think the key ingredient is that I'm pushing with really, really, really high intensity and I'm pushing my body to the limit of what I can do every session. I'm going to war with the weights. I think that has contributed more than anything else to the growth in these additional muscles that I'm not training directly, that are working as stabilizers and they're, they're kind of the beneficiary of some indirect stimulus. 
as I'm training my triceps, the lats, the chest, the shoulders are all being brought online because I'm training with such high intensity and I'm also executing the movement with certain cues and form to accentuate the stimulation of those muscles, given that I can't train them through a, a normal range of motion directly. And even doing them, getting them activated indirectly through these movements sometimes can exacerbate my shoulder issues and I have to really do a whole bunch of mobility and whatever. Videos in the description if you're interested more in that kind of discussion. Now, why the hell does this matter? Why should you be interested? Why should you give a flying fuck? <laughs> okay, I think the most interesting thing from this, in, this accidental experiment, all right? So this wasn't my plan. You know, three to four years ago, I was like, I miss working out. I miss training for muscle. You know, maybe there's some way I can find a way to do some elbow extensions and some elbow curls to train my arms. And I managed to, you know, find some simple movements that I can get away with, do a whole bunch of mobility before and after. A year or two in, I'm happy again, just glad I can get arm pumps. I started to notice that my back was growing, all right? And one thing's led to another. I just keep upping the ante. I keep showing up, doing my mobility. Things have progressed more and more where at this point, you know, I'm not the next freaking Mr. Olympia, but my back is substantially juicified. And the point of what I think you should take from this is that this idea that you need to hyper isolate all your muscles to grow them is massively overstated. And if I can get growth through indirect stimulus in my back um, from a triceps exercise, and I can grow my whole upper body uh, from doing triceps and just triceps and biceps, but pushing really, really hard, then if you have the ability to train your back directly, it doesn't, you don't need to watch another tier list video breaking down which movements are optimal and which ones suck. Like just pick any movement. You know, I, if I had the ability, hypothetically, to just train one back movement, seated cable rows, I have a lot of confidence that my back would be significantly developed because these other ingredients of consistency, intensity, and progression of being uh, willing to experiment and continue to expand your training and push your physical and mental lim uh, limits consistently to, to continue to up the ante add more weight, add more reps, try new approaches, change the t all this shit. It, that ingredient is way more important. And if you can take anything from this, take my approach. You watch the training footage of the intensity. I'm never missing sessions. I'm always going in no matter what. And then I'm reflecting on what I've done. And if I feel like I'm stagnating, I try to think of what can I do differently? Should I add more sets? Should I change my tempo? Should I try, I can't really change the movement much, but maybe I can change the cues that I use. It's allowed me to continue to progress and continue to see growth. And if you took that same approach, which is not that complicated, it's really on three foundational factors of consistency, intensity, and progression, and applied it to any freaking movement and just kind of cut the fat, cut all the bullshit out of this overcomplication of working out, and then you just pick a handful of back movements, you'd have way more growth. And I think the reality is that most people are hyper fixating on these details that don't matter that much of which exercise is most optimal or what's the optimal exact freaking tempo to contract and whatever. Like it's just overkill. And I, I, what I think the lesson is from my situation is that it illuminates that. It's like, and, and I th I've seen some people comment and go like, what the, this doesn't make any sense. Like you train only arms. Like my whole, my whole reality doesn't make sense now. And that's because people are portraying working out. Like you need to isolate every muscle like to the, extreme to grow, which isn't fully true. I think it's it's not like totally false, but it's a misrepresentation of what, what is probably closer to the truth, which is anytime you do any movement, you're gonna stimulate a lot of the muscles in your body. And especially if you push with really high intensity. Now, obviously the arms are small muscles that you're not you know massively training the rest of your body. But I think in my case, you can see that even, even with a small muscle like that that's thought of a, as a muscle that you isolate, if you push it hard enough and you're consistent and you find a way to progress, you're going to get spillover gains into the rest of your body. And so if you look at your back training and you do any pulling movement, you're involving your biceps, you're hitting your rear delts, your shoulders, and probably most of your back. So, so you don't need to worry about getting a stretch and doing the single arm. It's, that's not the thing that's missing for you. If you took my approach or anybody who's really dedicated to training's approach and just applied it to one movement or two movements or three movements, then you'll see more than enough progress. 
So I think if you're feeling overwhelmed trying to understand training, because it's, it's portrayed as so complex, and there's a new freaking study every day, and now this exercise, pull-ups are no good anymore, or black pull-downs don't work anymore, or this exercise actually sucks, or this exercise is goaded, it's like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. It just, it doesn't really matter that much. Pick a few movements for each muscle and focus on the other factors that I've mastered because I've been forced to master them because I don't have the access to these other things. So that's kind of the like, uh, it's been a blessing and a curse in some ways. Like obviously it sucks to not be able to train normally, but I think it's, it's illuminated a lot of things to me that when I was first starting out, when I was like 18, that I believed in, that are like kind of actually misrepresented like bullshit uh, advice. Um, so yeah, I think that's what you should take from it in going to apply your own training is these, these fundamental foundational factors of consistency, intensity, and progression are so much more important than anything else to the point where you can train your arms and, you know, obviously don't do what I'm doing. If you can train properly, train normally, but apply the same kind of approach, the approach to which you train intensity, consistency, and progression is so much more important than all these little nitpicking details and trying to over complicate the training. So a lot of that is just like shortcuts. And I would say, you know, I've talked about this before. If you've been, been, uh, you know, if you're a re returning subscriber, a loyal fan, I appreciate you. But I think a lot of it is the content that's being put out. You know, the thing to think about is, although it's content for you, the person making it is making it for themselves to gain from it, myself included. So it's not like, okay, I'm making this to give you advice and talk about training because I like it and I want to make the content, but also I want to gain from it. I want to grow my YouTube channel and I want people to sign up for my arm program so I can make money off of it. <laughs> That's the truth, right? But I'm, to me, I try to be honest in what I think the truths of training are. And I'm not saying people are purposely not being honest, but what I'm trying to get at is that if you make working out really, really complicated and you make it all scientific and technical, like over the top, which so many different people have, over many different years, I've consumed the content myself. Is it because that's a true representation of what the process for building muscle actually looks like and what you actually need to know? Or is that because it makes content that captivates you and then sells whatever that person is selling? And I think the latter is a lot of times a stronger motivation. And so if some piece of content around training, I think is it's extremely technical and it's making it seem like working out is so freaking complicated, working out to build muscle, it's probably misrepresenting the true process in what I've seen in my lived experience. The true process is not that complicated. There's a handful of foundational things that you need to master. And a lot of it is finding ways to habitually change your mentality and the habits that you take on so that you can continue to execute at a higher and higher level. And typically the more that you put in and the more that you're willing to sacrifice and the more that you're willing to push outside of your comfort zone and outside of your mental barriers, the more physical process, physical progress you'll see. And it's not really that complicated. The details are massively overstated. And the reason I'm kind of highlighting this from a content perspective and what I think a lot of the content points to is because you might be asking, well, why is there so much information now about, about working out? Why is it like just nonstop mountains of freaking content about every different exercise and training split? And it's like, because it's not because it's not because every single person who wants to talk about content goes, I'm just gonna try my very best to only 100% honestly represent the process of gaining muscle. That's all I'm gonna do. Every, my my north star, no matter what, is gonna be what is the truth about gaining muscle. That's not how people are approaching content for the most part. There's a ton of other factors involved. One of, major one of them being is how do I captivate people and get views and then convert them into buying whatever I'm selling. And so that's why I think it's, it's much easier to make working out more complicated than it is to make you think you need to know more than you do so that you need this person's information and you need their programming or their coaching or whatever to be able to understand it. Because you, what's limiting you from getting the progress you want is a lack of understanding and knowledge. And obviously knowledge and education around training is important, but <laughs> it's not that, work, I don't know. The point I'm trying to make is working out is not that complicated. And if you always show up 
and you train extremely hard. You go to freaking war with the weights. You're smart about it. So you stay healthy and don't get injured. And then you find ways to progress, whether it's the weight, the reps, the tempo, change your training. So you're not just doing the exact same thing overall the whole time. Try to evolve, take new things on. That's it, man. I don't think it needs all the other details. We can sit and talk about and have discussions about them, but it's it's like kind of overkill. At that point, it's just take take the knowledge and go apply. It's an application is what most people are missing. Application with like vigorous intent is the main ingredient that most people are missing, but there's just not much to talk about with that. So anyways, I'm kind of starting to rant and ramble. You guys know how it goes, but that's the point of all this is that if I can grow my back from a tricep exercise is that you probably don't need to worry that much about trying to perfectly isolate all of your muscles individually. You know, it's probably overkill because, you know, any back movement is hitting pretty much the whole back. Uh, you know, any pressing movement is probably hitting the whole chest. You don't need to worry about isolating the top versus the bottom. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I think you should take. So, hopefully that makes sense. If you want to get huge pipes, sign up for the program. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.